Wolf pricks. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> it's, it's good to see him after all these years. Yeah. All right, Wolf. So I I know so many stories about the BMW Velt, but do you think that's your first cloud? No. What's a cloud before it? We did it in '68. Well, okay, I guess. Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that. I'm sorry. No, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. This was a pneumatic construction a long time ago. And when you but were. By the way, I have to say, I don't know whether people said that already. This exhibition is one of the most intelligent architectural exhibitions I saw in the last decade. Hey, well, that's CCA. <laughs> But that's also not saying much. That might say more about other exhibitions, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, you are shy. You shouldn't be so shy. It's very, you know, usually I leave architectural exhibition after 10 minutes. Yeah. Here I stayed at least 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot there. <laughs> no, it's great. So about the cloud. No, it's just you hear cloud every time now. And I always think of you every time somebody says, we're going to go put this on the cloud. Yeah, I everyone think. is saying cloud and things like that. No, but it's a digital concept, I think. Not at all. Okay, that's why not you're here. All, yeah, not at all. Because I'm not used to, to this digital stuff. Because I'm, I'm more interested to create spaces which, which you have never seen before. And since digital methods uh, enables us to do so, I use it, yeah. Long time to go to discover the advantages. It took us a while, yeah. Actually, when I, I saw long time ago in a scientific magazine um, that there is a studio in LA which could copy the the, the head of the Nofrotete by the space arm. So I went to to LA, went to Frank's office. And he said, oh, I know this <laughs> studio is right next to there. And this was nine, no, 80, 85, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the story is about, I saw a movie here from Bollinger, uh, where a lot of columns coming down from this so-called cloud. You hadn't seen it before. No, <laughs> I, no, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I, I, I have seen it, yeah. And, it happened that I did a lecture in, <laughs> in Frankfurt, and the whole office was sitting in the first and second row. And I said, why you guys are sitting here not going back to your office and erase all these columns because I want to have this uh, thing fly? Uh, it's that easy. They went back home, worked a little bit, and now we only have 11 columns, <laughs> which I'm very proud of to be honest. <laughs> well, one thing, it seems like in your work, the digital incrementally took on different roles. I mean, I know in, let's say, the, the archive when it arrived with whatever it was, 40 or 50 blue models, yeah. like the models that are on display there, maybe 12 of them. You know, let's say 25 of them were cut with a CNC machine and 25 were cut with a wire and, and by yeah. hand. Yeah. And a lot of them were using both. I mean, for you, was the digital ever like a big deal or was it just incremental? Just a tool. To be honest, just a tool. Yep. Yeah. To get along with, of course, new ideas. What I like on the data, yeah, I like that we could um, shape a building along the wind which was not possible before, yeah. yeah. And the sun and all these constraints we could use in order to create kind of a new aesthetical approach. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, you mentioned Bollinger. How did it, did it change your relationship with your engineers? No, it, uh, the, 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 the structural uh, engineering and calculation, they went faster, yeah. yeah. So, when we started to do the, the rooftop, 
uh, the <laughs> structural engineer had to, to, to calculate the structure. I think it, it took two months. <laughs> now you can do it in one day. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a real advantage. And did you feel like uh, Klaus was ahead in that sense, or did you feel like you were pushing Klaus towards developing Kurumba? Uh, or does it matter? Yeah, we pushed him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So you're in photorealism yeah, that's, with that film. You want to tell why that film was done, how it was done, how much it cost, yeah, anything like that? It's a long story, but I cut it short. Okay. My, my teacher, Schwanzer, had to do a one-to-one -one model of the office in the headquarters of BMW in order to convince the client that they can work in such a kind of office. And this was a strategy we took over because uh, I saw that the, the head guys of BMW never realized how big this uh, building will be. They were talking, oh, I know the roof is steel and glass. Um, uh, I know because I did a winter garden right now. So, um, so we thought, I have to present we, can't, we cannot do a one-to-one -one model, but I have to present it in a way so that they understand. I asked the guy, Greg Lynn, who could help us to make a movie, a very expensive movie. <laughs> and he said, uh, take this guy, Imaginary Forces. And they came to Vienna with 30 people. <laughs> and we had a big model because I wanted to make uh, a combination of digitized surfaces with a real model. And the thing was, yeah, first day they uh, came in catering and everything. <laughs> and, yeah, 30 people running around, and one guy was sitting on the laptop and playing around one day. Next day I said, oh, when will you start to make a movie? I said, tomorrow. Tomorrow? He, mounted the camera, and the camera <laughs> made this move. Next day. <laughs> <laughs> the camera made this move. 30 people were running around, and it, catering. Yeah, catering, and have fun, and light, burning the model with uh, strong lights. And, so. and when we presented that, I, I rented a factory, uh, with a, because we mounted a screen uh, eight meters high and 12 meters long in order to make the, the real appearance of the, the building. And after five minutes when it was over, uh, the movie cost us 800,000 euros. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I was sitting there explaining that how big this, and the guy, the head guy saw a BMW model in this, um, in this movie I said, oh, this is the real size of the car. Oh, this is a big building. OK, let's build it. <laughs> so I was really a kind of relieved if, <laughs> because if he wouldn't have said that, I wouldn't sit here, because. <laughs> In the, the digital content that was, pre let's say, mapped into that physical yeah, model? Yeah. Were you exploring how far that would go in that film? Or were you already thinking that, that all those surfaces should be digitally active? I, I was not exploring the next step, which comes later. And now we are doing a lot of experiments with digitized music in order to create new shapes, mm -hmm. which is very interesting, actually. I have to say that music is a very great influence. And even material you can read out of music. Yeah. There is the Kimi Shelter, the solo of Keith Richard. At the very end, he's playing actually an open-tuned G um, um, guitar. And there is a sound. I really want to have that material looking like this. This note is sounding. Yeah? It's like transparent. Uh, wobbling concrete with a certain strength. If, if I can invent this material, and if I would build a building with this material, then I would give up architecture, because then it's done. 
All right, well then wait a while. No, 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 well, we try, <laughs> try, we try hard. Ask me for my pot, or how do you say it? Oh, do you have a plug? Yeah, do plug. Do you need to yeah. have anything to plug? <laughs> yeah, I have a plug. I will buy a Fender Telecaster from 62. Wow. All right, that's a good plug. <laughs> This is the Greg Lynn Show with Greg Lynn, produced by the CCA. I am Wolf Pricks, and I thank you for watching.